I'm now speaking with Grazia Vitatini, CTO of the Airbus. Of Airbus. Thank you for speaking with me. Quick question. You're operating in a world which is interesting in terms of technology change, very rapid, relentless, and yet you're in a business that is very highly regulated. How does Airbus work within this loose side that keeps changing and the very fixed side that is regulated? That's a very pertinent question, Edison, because it's, it's, it's practically really my, my job, right? To ensure keeping up with the pace of disruption and innovation out there, whilst complying, complying with the standards of the industry, most notably the safety standards, which is something we are not looking to compromise at any price whenever entering in new products and new services. So that part of the regulatory framework is something which we absolutely uh, are committed to, to sticking to, no matter what, safety first always. Um, when it comes to entering, uh, integrating new technologies on flying platforms, well, that's where the likelihood of entering uncharted territory is pretty high. Um, territory for which certification paths haven't been paid yet. So where really the pages need to be written in terms of standardization and certification. Typically, the urban air mobility uh, type of, of, of business um, where we're developing different platforms um, as demonstrators and technologically there still is some work to do in terms of battery integration, um, electrical propulsion, uh, sense and avoid autonomy. So technologically we're not quite there yet, but there's uh, the gap is not that high. Whereas when you look into the certification aspects of these type of platforms, and in particular, the uh, air traffic management rules, how you're going to inject these type of, of, of vehicles into the existing um, airspace. So these are pages which still need to be written. So definitely a highly regulated environment, but very often for disruptive technologies, the, the regulations just do not exist yet. And it's absolutely our role to, uh, to co-design hand in hand with the regulatory bodies, with the governments, with institutions, with our partners, the, uh, the, the rules of the game to enable fulfilling, first of all, that uh, top level safety requirement. So, uh, can, we just, uh, can I just, can I just... Today we also saw at the show Rolls-Royce bought the Siemens electric motor business. That is disruptive. There's lots and lots of equipment, partly also from you at Airbus, electric powered flying vehicles. Some of them look like toads. Some of them look like little spiders. Very odd looking things. If you look forward five years, is that too soon to expect some of the stuff to be really doing what they say it's going to do? It really depends from the type of uh, flying platform you're looking at. So definitely for urban air mobility type of vehicles, that could be a very immediate application where, again, the big challenge is certifying these, uh, these, these platforms and ensuring that the air traffic management and unmanned traffic management rules are set. Um, when it comes to uh, aircraft of a, of a different category, well, um, you know, we did the maths for the A320. I always get the question, could we envisage having a fully electrical A320 flying at some point in time? Well, um, let us assume for an instant that we could integrate batteries into our product being 30 times more energy dense than the currently certified standard. 30 times, let's assume that. If we could get our hands on that type of technology, we'd have an A320 be able to fly one-fifth of its range at half of its payload. So it doesn't tally up, okay? It's it's not the typical single AO mission where we will not go into purely uh, electrification uh, concepts, but rather in more hybrid type of architectures where um, you could think of really um, 
using the purely electrical propulsive part of the chain. Uh, for instance, for takeoff and landing, enabling to seriously abate the noise, which is one of the limiting um, factors today in aviation. So, definitely, electrical propulsion, hybrid electrical propulsion, are uh, a reality today for aviation. Uh, for the, let's say, um, urban air mobility, regional type of, uh, of aircraft, uh, we could envisage a fully electrical type of, uh, of, of, of uh, propulsive chain going more and more into hybrid uh, if we grow and go into the single little type of segment. Whereas on the long range type of product, well, we will need to fly with gas turbines still for the next years to come. And that's where sustainable aviation fuels certainly have a role to play. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alison.